Hi, welcome to Ghostman Radio Station. Tonight I am talking to Milo Scher... Right? Milo Scherf. Scherf. Right. I really got the right, but I was going to get there. Milo Scherf is trained as a journalist, editor and physician for taking a turn into poetry. For everything changed, he was a facility member at the University of California, San Francisco, mentoring and teaching students in international low resource settings. The commitment to global health grew out of a work connection with India, the Americas, Libya, Haiti and China. Then one day a shocking phone call collapsed this pursuit, engagement and action. A 24-year-old son, a mountaineer, peace and conflict scholar, veteran, had passed away. Poems demanded to be written. It brought relief and healing, as did warm, glassy hills. Tree spirits in the arms of the sky. Years wandered past. Poems continued to emerge as the tangles of a day slipped into night. Now, Milo, tell me a little bit about, if you want, please, I mean, I know it's a horrible memory sometimes if we go back over what happened, but can you tell me a little bit about what happened to your son and how it influenced your poetry? Well, I was... I was in the middle of engagement with work and and family, and I suddenly got a phone call one morning when I was alone in the house, and it was the mother of my son's my son's friend who had been with him when he passed on in a horrible accident. She said, "I'm so sorry to hear that your son has passed." And I said, "What are you talking about?" And she said, "Oh." I, 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 and then we both stuttered back and forth for a while, and and it was so kind of her to call, but it was it was so shocking, and so I was in my dining room, and I started walking around the table trying to figure out, you know, what what do you do, and I called the police, and I called uh, where the area where he'd been living, those police, and I I thought, well, I should call a coroner. I didn't know whether that was the appropriate thing to do and i could not get any information so as i was pacing i noticed that i was getting chest pain and it got worse and worse and until it was so severe i'm a physician and i thought to myself but i'm too young to be having a heart attack and what i later realized was that my heart can break, a heart can break, and my heart was breaking. So my husband uh, called him, and he came, and we went to the place where my son um, had, had been living. And then the whole, everything began to happen, which was all the uh, all the mourning and, and the grief and meeting people who told me ways that they had used to get through grief. And... That's that was the start of the book, and as I I mentioned earlier, just before we got on the air, the poems sort of came out. They demanded to be written, and in doing that, I could think more about what I'd ha- what had happened, and these poems became a guidebook um, when I put them together. I hadn't thought of that, so that's that was the the way it started. Well, I don't know if you've ever been asked this question before, but do you think? Like some people that believe, like um, people like Beethoven were inspired by he- the um, voices from heaven and stuff like that. Do you think your son, in some way, has influenced any of your poetry subconsciously? Oh, uh, he's he's definitely affected my poetry. Um, he, my son, is a is was a adventurer and a veteran a photographer a world traveler and he was very in touch with nature and he was also a mountaineer so he traveled um when he wasn't in school uh, because he was 24 when he passed and took amazing photographs which are also in the book so he directly influences the book and that his Photographs are on every other page uh, beside my poetry, and they give the reader 
sort of a break from from grief and a break from the feelings that they're having as they read through the poems. He also influenced my poetry because he's a very straightforward and I, I don't want to say simple, but um, he 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 was didn't believe in unnecessary complexity, and so you know, what you see is that most of my poems are are pretty clear about what was happening. And then I'm not quite sure if you meant to ask this, but when at, at very early on in the grieving process, actually just as we were walking out of the funeral home, we saw a and there were just a seven of us, the people who loved Alex the best. We were walking down the stairs, and all of a sudden, on the black top driveway at our feet, there was a praying mantis. And I had I had lived in this area for 30 years, and I'd never seen one. And over the course of the next period of months and a couple of years, I, I saw a number of them. And, and usually it was at a time when something emotional or difficult was happening. And so I felt like, and then a friend told me, he said, he said he had lost his daughter and she had fallen off a cliff and she was, I think, 18 years old when she was climbing. And he said, you know, you need to watch for unusual occurrences because they will, they will tell you that your loved one is not gone. And so I I began to look for those, and that was really really incredibly comforting. Yeah, I don't disbelieve in that. I I think I honestly think there is something beyond what proper understanding, whether it is an a, a omnipotent being or whether we I personally believe we could probably go into the stars and we come like a hive mind. And that hive mind becomes like a good spirit or a bad spirit or whatever. I, I, I mean, I'm not too sure. That's my theory anyway. <laughs> uh-huh. And and so um, I also, as you can tell, um, believe that you don't just die. You go to some different place. And I also, I'm not technically a very religious person but the theory of reincarnation really makes sense to me how else could you account for the incredible inequality of people across the earth and so that uh when i when i think about it that way it makes sense that we don't just stop here i'm also oh go ahead obviously as you're physician brain have you ever come across uh, i'm going to ask you this as a a, it's probably off topic but there is a a a theory out there that when they do an um, i don't mean to upset you but when they do an autopsy there's always a discretion in the weight of the body that they can't understand where this this bit is gone and a lot of people believe it's the soul it's like a, it's only like a couple of grams or something stupid, and they there's lots of theories out there. This could be the soul that's left the human body. I mean, I don't know if you've heard of this or not, but uh, there is writings out there about it. Um, I I haven't, so I can't I can't really comment on that. I know that um, autopsies take place after a period of time, so there could be changes in that have to do with physical properties, but. And I don't necessarily understand the soul as a physical object. I, I there is a soul, um, but I don't know that I, I don't know anything about whether it has weight or, or or mass. So it's hard. I'm sorry, I can't comment better on that because I haven't read those particular um, that particular information. And also, um, obviously. Uh people have been reading your your poems and do you get a lot of feedback from other people who've gone through similar situations like yourself read your poems and they've gone yes i had that exact feeling at that exact moment kind of thing i'm 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 really looking forward to getting that feedback my 
my book has just been published and I've had a little bit of difficulty with the printer who is printing it for the publishing house. And so it's available now in the Blur bookstore, but because I have, and then my website is um, in, a, in a process of recreation, so it'll be more friendly to people who come in. And that has a place where people can give their feedback. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from them, to seeing um, if it's helped them and, you know, what what they think about different poems. And that's the point of the book, is to give people sort of a guidebook. And, and I want them to tell me if any of the things that are described in the poems have helped them and how. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that, but I haven't gotten it yet. Oh, well, hopefully by people listening to this podcast, they might go out and read, even if it's an excerpt from the book, because you can get quite a lot of places who will give you like a, a free little bit of the book that you can read, like a harp, like one poem or something like that. And then you can sort of look at it like that or go out and buy the book, obviously. I mean, uh, uh, your book is called Blown Into Now. Poems for a journey, right? And and uh, on the it's blurb dot com on on their uh, in their bookstore, and it will be distributed more widely um, once um, once the rest of the uh, distribution is is completed. But um, if you go there, you can see about the first um, fifteen or so pages, and so there are poems on those pages. You're right. The other thing that I'm really excited about is that the book will come out in an e-version. And as you under, you you would know, photographs are more expensive when you put them into a book. A book is more expensive when you put photographs into it. And so I wanted to decrease the cost and and have it available, you know, very widely. And the ebook, it'll be about four dollars, and it'll come out, I think, in about a week or two, and that'll be announced on my website, which is miloshaff.com. Easy to remember if you remember my name. And have you ever considered, or have you done, an expedition of your uh, son's photos in, like a, you know, like an expedition, so that people can say, like, they can buy? buy is it? Well, they can buy an image now online. You don't have, you don't got the actual the print, but you got the image of the print. Like, is it any art? They've got a strange name where you can buy the image off online, but you only own the, you don't own the painting or the print, but you only own the image for that that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't considered that, and I'll I'll think more about it. Um, it it would be the book is obviously a tribute to him and to have his photos more widely viewable would be wonderful. Yeah, well, I think it would be a good idea because obviously all the pictures he took. I mean, they're, they're going to be quite dramatic with the like the skylines and the mountains and various other things that people are going to go wow, <laughs> you know? Because uh-huh. I, I think I I mean. It's not an easy thing to set up, but you could look into it, you know, at, at a later date anyway. That's what I would suggest. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll look into it. Thank you. I know. Also, have you ever done, like, um, a narration of your poems, like for an audio book or anything like that? Well, there. When, she, when your book is published, there are options to put it into an audio book. And right now, I have not yet done that. But I, again, that's something, it's been really busy lately. I have a, a day job as, as a physician. And um, so it's been uh, a challenge to give my, uh, my, my book the attention it needs to get it out there. So people will hopefully suffer less as they go through their path of mourning but i will definitely be looking into that i've thought about it it's and i've listened to one, i've listened to wonderful books so i know how how great it is to hear people's diff, people's voices uh, i think it's worthwhile and especially if you could do it yourself i mean it's quite not as hard as people think it is you just got to have the right you could do it on the phone. You, all you got to do is have a decent 
MP3 recorder and send it to like a Dropbox or something like that, and then play it back and see if you like the quality. And if you don't like that quality, play we record it again because then you can record it at your pace. You know, because it's. I'll give you a sample. I'll just do, with your permission, just a little bit of your po- 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 poem sampler in the exotic okay. heart, heart of, of walk. Right? You go something like. It's not a matter of sneaking to skirt the plastic fence, popsicle orange in a stream of sun crossing the parking lot, where crows peck at bare sand past the rail bridge and through the bushes. A door there opens. So that's how you can do it, a little at your own pace, or you know. The other, the other um, place I'm sure I'm going to do it, um, even if it's not produced separately, as an as a um, book that I read um, is on my website. I'm going to record some of these poems and have um, a video uh, yeah, so awesome. that people yeah. can hear them. What? Or an audio. Right. Second idea. You can get programs now where you can uh, put pictures on and you can, yeah, if you yeah, you can download a program where you can put an MP3 on, and you you can put an image with the MP3, and you could choose a picture of your son's one of your son's photo and the, the poem that relates to the photo, and put it on YouTube. That's a great idea. Yep, that's a very great idea. Okay, you've given me a lot of <laughs> I, I just, additional I wonderful things to pursue. I think it would work. I, I just think it would work. Because, yeah. Because if you have the image and you see the video, the poem as well, you can relate straight away. You know, well, yeah, no, I mean, who am I? I'm, I'm just an open. But... <laughs> I, I try to help people because I think if in life you don't can't help people, it's a sad thing. It's it's a sad a sad thing, you know. Yeah, that's a wonderful philosophy, uh, helping people, and I, obviously the, with the book I try to do that too. So th- I appreciate all your help. That's okay. I don't mind. And also, um, as you. As you chose the photos, did you find it hard to pick which ones you wanted to keep in and which ones you had to leave out? Because sometimes it could be one might be more put too personal to put in the book. You know, it was too emotionally attached to it, or anyway, or so it it was hard. Um, it it was emotional. It was it was emotionally in it was emotional in a good and bad way, um, not bad, but a, a, a positive and um, a sad way. To look at the photos and to feel like I couldn't call him up was really hard. But on the other hand, I'd look at other photos and think we had twenty four years of this amazing person beside us, so. That, that was emotional. In terms of choosing the pictures, that was difficult too because I was trying to have photos that in somehow reflected or, or totally different, uh, reflected something about the poem or were completely different than the poem so that people can just take a break. Um, and that was a, a, a really careful process and, and it, it, it wasn't difficult but I also got to feel that I was looking at the world through his eyes and he really saw beauty so that that was uh, one of the wonderful things about when I chose the photos I think I think that's lovely I think I think that's why I, I like to talk to the author because then you get the personal touch the insight of how they saw it, how you see it, and how you want it to be perceived. Because obviously, like anything you create, like I've written books and poems and drawings, and you like somebody to like it, don't you? You, you even if it's like one <laughs> yes. person, you know, you hope like, for that. Put it out, 
Oh, please like it, please like it. You know, you know. You, yeah. Because selling a book, people got these images like, oh, you're going to be a millionaire in, in fantastic money. But they don't realise, as you know now, you've got to put the hard yards in. You've got to do interviews like this. You've got to do... Um, uh, to attend a uh, a book signing somewhere if they ask you to. I mean, even if in your job, I know it's hard because of your day job. But then again, they might say to you, "Oh, Milo, could you turn up at such and such a shop to sign the book for us?" You know, you, that's the sort of thing you would like to do eventually, wouldn't it? If someone, if a book, a book has said to you, "Oh, we're going to do a little special on your book today." Um, so much, if you used to get that signed by the author, you can get so much off or something like that, you know. Because a lot of, a lot of people do do the bookshop tours, don't they? They do. <laughs> Although it's a lot, a lot on Zoom now, which yeah, is Zoom, fortunate because yeah. it's so easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can still do it on Zoom. So it's, I think Zoom's, uh, it's helped us in one way, obviously, because you know, as a physician, you know what COVID, um, done to people it, it changed their life and i think in some way through your poems b- related to your son they can see how life could be again you know what i mean because we've we've sort of in my mind we've had two worlds now you watch a film and you go pre-covid because it's they're all close together there's no separation and you watch the soaps and the films now there's separation you can see that there's a covid bubbles around it without them trying to show there's covid bubbles but you can you can see it and we i think we live in the two worlds now we had pre-covid covid and we've got to go back to the way we were but we're all scared of what that doing it and i think like you said by reading poetry by yourself and other and other other people like yourself I think we could be inspired to go back. What do you think? Well, I think we all have a lot of concern about COVID in the future because it's produced so many variants. And when each variant comes out, you know, we ask the question, not only how infectious is it, but how serious uh, is is the illness? Uh, do what percent of people go to the hospital? Who does it affect the most? And you can see across the globe how different cultures in different countries are are trying to go back to what used to what we called normal. We didn't know it was normal then. Uh, and then there there are others that have a lot of fear because they're older or they might have some kind of a condition or they're just, they're concerned, they know someone who has long COVID. So I I don't know what to do about the future. What I do is I mask when I'm close to people and I try to eat outdoors, but I tend to be a little bit more conservative than a lot of people. It You're right that my book does, is pre-COVID, and you can tell in the poems that especially there's one where you know after we had um had had actually a mass um and my my parents really felt strongly about that that was beautiful after we did that that, with a small number of people we realized that there were so many that wanted to say so long to to alex and to have a way to celebrate him and his life. And so some friends helped us put together a celebration in Berkeley. And and we actually had like a little army of people who came in to help us, you know, friends and family. And there were, ended up being like 400 people there sitting side by side. And I know people are doing that now, but not so much. And, and, and in a book, I say, you know, whether you can gather with people in person or um, from afar, that's important to, to be with family and friends, not only at a celebration, but 
to maintain those contacts because that's the support and the love that will also get you through. Now, well, before we, we, um, we started the podcast, I asked Milo if she would kindly do a reading of one of her poems. And she'll be doing right. that in a second while she sorts out which one she wants to choose to do. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so the book is Blown Into Now. And the, uh, the poem I'm reading is called uh, People Come and I Don't Know What to Do. And this was within a, a day or two of my son passing. And I don't know, there was the grapevine in our valley and it got around to people. And this is what happened. In her hands, mine twitch like bird wings. She leans closer. Some things can help, she whispers. We get a lamp of coconut oil. We keep it burning for 14 nights and 14 days. Trim the wick every hour. We repeat holy words. The words help our loved ones pass, and the words will one day bring them back, as if there were no parting. I light a storm candle. Two half-remembered women knock on the front door. We have lentil soup for you and bread. Others are coming. I sit. Stories of you encircle me. He takes me down the back stairs and we sit with the flowers. His eyes flame. Walk, he insists. I walk for my daughter. I walk every day near trees or streams. I watch. You must watch for secret signs. You are so dear. The one who is gone will sneak back for a moment wearing the antenna of a cricket or grazing your cheek like a drunken honeybee. The crows scream, I follow. Very beautiful. Thank, you for, thank you for letting me read that. I, was like, I just wanted you to give an example so people had to feel the, the flow of the poetry. Uh-huh. Yeah, and and um, please mention anywhere you want, anything you want people to um look at um, obviously go and buy your book well i think the easiest thing to remember is my website milo shaft that's m-y-l-o-s-c-h-a-a-f dot com because that will be the hub of information for when the ebook comes out how to buy my book there are other poems there I'll be able to get your response, get your response back, um, where there's a place where you can can enter your your feelings and your words. So I think that's the easiest. And then there are readings coming up, and I've been a little bit delinquent in putting them up, but I'll work harder on that so that people know in the future where programs like this, which I appreciate so much, uh, will be available. Or recorded, so you can look at them after the yeah, fact. that's fine, that's fine. I mean, this is obviously an audio version, but don't worry about that. I can only, I'm can i putting an image of the book up, and I'll tell you I'll tell you the site in a minute um, that you can go to. Now, thank you, okay. for, thank you for being on my show, Milo. I do appreciate you giving your time a day. I know how precious time is in this world that we live in. And I would like to say something that I think Alex is looking down from you, from the stars. I like to think that we've been watched from the stars, looking down, sharing these thoughts with you every day. And then some, I believe sometimes he says, say, "Hello, Mum, I'm still here." He does say that. We have conversations sometimes. Thank you so much for having me on on the show. I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate the people who took the time to listen. Thank you.